Good morning, everybody. So uh, I decided that today we are going to do something that's quite different. Uh, so as you may know, I have a poster shop and uh, let's just say the code isn't ideal. So I decided that today we could kind of dive in into a real project and just work on refining the code base. So let's just jump right into this. Alrighty, uh, so just so you have some context, this is the the bespoke project. Uh, so here it doesn't have a lot of data, but like you know, it's a landing page. It has some some data. Uh, it's cool because like you can generate posters on the fly, and like you have some that are uh, you know pretty fine, and you also have like these these galleries, so we can get inspired and maybe. Uh, build your own wall, but that's not important. What we are interested in here is the code base. I have like a bunch of controllers here that are kind of meh. You know, we were kind of rushing to just get this out of the way and um, and get the project done. So the code is not ideal. Uh, it's also like not super bad. We just need to make it a bit better. So this is what we are going to, to focus on now. You know, I obviously got like resources, but uh, the controllers are not purely created, so it contains only the, the the CRUD actions. So you know, index or update, delete, and stuff like that. Uh, there is a lot of like logic in the controller, so maybe we can simply sprinkle some service logic on top of it and make sure that the code is scalable for the future. Normally, I would follow like domain-driven design. Uh, but for now, we can just start with services. So I'll just create a new directory called services. And here we'll put some, some logic for our controllers. So first of all, we need to think that we really want to have all of the controllers in one directory. And the answer is probably almost always no. Because, you know, as the project grows, we are going to have a bunch of controllers here. So maybe let's create folders for them. So first, let's select them by like the resource that they're connected to. So maybe we can start with user. So the user controller and user order controller would go there. The user order controller is actually kind of controversial. Maybe it's connected to user to order more than a user, but I don't think so. I think it's connected to user. Doesn't matter. Um, let's go further and you know do one for coupon. So we can put our coupon validate controller here. Uh, we can create one for gallery. Put the gallery controller here. Uh, now let's do one for newsletter. And you know this is a bunch of. This is just me creating a bunch of uh, folders, so this must be super entertaining. So I will try and make it as, as quick as possible. Let's create one for contacts, one for category, one for the payment, one for the order, and one for the products. You, you get the gist of it. Just split everything into folders. Right, and with the magic of PHP Storm, our APIs got refactored. So, like all the uses of these controllers were also refactored, so they are done in the proper way. So this is perfect. Uh, now, what we need to do is we just need to make sure that every single one of those controllers is better than it's currently. And you know, we can we we don't have to make it perfect. We can just do a couple of iterations, right? So maybe let's start with services or whatever comes to mind. So let's look at the user. So here we can see a couple of problems, right? Uh, first of all, this is like super ugly and this is an easy fix. What we can do is we can actually go into this, this request. And here we can do a public function called validated and we can just override the default. Or we can do like a custom function called user data. It's whatever. Uh, since last version, Laravel kind of extended the default validated method, so it has key and and defaults. Uh, 
this makes it kind of tricky because you should follow the standard, but in theory, like in theory, you should follow the standard, but they never do it. So maybe just let's go with user data. And user data will simply get this validated. So this will return a full data that passes the validation. And then we can do simply something like data password equals hash make data password. And now we can just return the data. So this will obviously return an array. And now here, what we can do is we can simply do, you know, request user. update and then just pass the request user data. So this is a simple fix. Now let's see if our uh, password is guarded. It's not. We can you now obviously remove those comments because we all know what it does. Now here we can see an index that just returns the user data. What would be more preferable is to return a, a resource containing the user data. So maybe we can create this resource. So we already have a user resource and this is used nowhere actually. So that's pretty cool. Let's we'll just steal that and use it here. So we can simply do user resource, make best user. And here it will return a user resource. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is all of the data that we need here. So, you know, this is not perfect, but it's definitely better. Uh, here we could create a resource, but honestly, I think it's an overkill at this point. Now let's go to user order controller. And here we can see, it's kind of, uh, you know what, maybe let's create that that user service. So in our services, we'll create a new directory called user, and here we'll create a user service. User service. Okay. Let's just use it here. We'll just use a construct and then we'll do protected user service service. This thing. Uh, I always forget to change my PHP settings, PHP storm settings, so it goes like this, but I can just do it manually. And here we could do something like, you know, service, uh, this service orders for uh, list orders. And we can simply pass the request user. We'll copy this. And here we'll pass the request. So HTTP, eliminate HTTP request. And now we need to create this method. And this would simply return something like this. And now we need to replace this with user ID. And this will return a collection, an eloquent collection. This is fine, but what we also can do is we can see if the user has relationship with orders and he doesn't. So let's just add it. I'll click function orders and the user has many there. Okay. So now in our service, what we can do is we can simply do user orders latest get. And this just reads better. Okay, so maybe let's go to our newsletter controller and this should be fairly simple. What we are going to do here is uh, we are simply going to create a new, a new service. So let's create a newsletter and here and simply add a new newsletter service. Here, you know, let's just initiate it. A new Slatter service.
And all we need to do is do this service subscribe. And then we just need to pass the email or just to request that email so we don't have an inline variable. And then we can copy all of the scrap. Paste it here. This will be a string called email. And that's fine. And here we can do this service unsubscribe. And let's just pass the, the email. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, now let's go to galleries and here, you know, we have a bit more happening. So first of all, let's think about this. We have the sitemap here and I don't love it. So maybe we can create something called gallery sitemap controller. And I will simply replace the the callback here from this function to just the gallery sitemap controller. And here we'll have an invocable controller. And for now, let's just copy this, uh, the, the body of this method. All right, so you know the drill. Now let's just create a new directory. Let's do gallery. And let's add a gallery service. Okay, so here we can basically see that we are caching our response here, so we don't have to duplicate this query. It's not super expensive query, but but why would we duplicate it if you know it will be the same all the time? The more important question is where does the cache live? And you can argue that it lives in the controller. Uh, or in the service. In this specific example, I, I will just utilize it and and just create a method in service that indicates that the resource that we are fetching is cached. So here we can just do service get all. Uh, obviously, this service. And this will return an anonymous resource collection. Uh, okay, so here, how do we call it? List all, right? No, get all, get all. Okay, so let's name it get all cached. And let's just paste it here. And, you know, now we are good. So these two could be merged together. Uh, there is this new addition called with where has, and this basically just chains where has with with. Um, so we can just utilize that. So maybe instead of even doing that, <clears throat> we can just create a scope called valid. Or yeah, let's just do valid and uh, in our gallery. We can do public function, scope valid. And because we're only adding a one scope, there is no reason to just like create a separate query class or anything like that. This is a simple project. There's no need to over-engineer that. So let's pass the builder and we'll just do, you know, <clears throat> builder with where has products. I'm not a fan of the valid because like, Maybe available. I think that reads better. Uh, because it's not like the other galleries are invalid. They are just, you know, being created. So maybe available is a better term. And here we should have a semicolon instead of the comma. And this will return a collection. Um, all right. So this seems fine now. For now, we didn't really do anything novel. It's just me moving stuff around, but 
maybe we'll get to something. You never know. I'm just, you know, trying to show you the process. It's not always exciting. Sometimes you just do these small improvements and just get something new at the end. So let's just go to our controllers. Let's just have some fun. Uh, you know, pop a soda or whatever. And so yeah, here. You know, we don't need that string to lower. It was previously an enum, so that's why I left it here. Uh, second of all, let's create a, a request here. So I will just do PHP. What they do? Uh, I opened Tinkerbox. Uh, let's do PHP artisan make requests. And here we can simply do coupon validate request. And let's import that. And here we can remove all of this crap. And we'll just do, you know, coupon required exists coupons code. So now you won't be able to, you know, submit a coupon that doesn't work. Uh, that they yeah, it's code, coupon code. Okay. So now we can just replace it with first or fail. All right. And now I think we're in a good spot to let's just replace get with validated. Uh, we are in a good spot to create the service. So, you know, we'll just create a directory called coupon. Here we can create a coupon service. Now let's we'll just create a construct here. You know, the drill, let's we'll just act it. Coupon service. And this can be replaced with a resource. You know, it's, I just prefer to copy that. So, rid of that. Just copy the user resource, make it a uh, coupon resource. Okay, we have an ID. We don't need an ID. We can just copy these things here. And let's just replace it all with this. And now we can simply do coupon resource make coupon. We don't have yet. Let's say coupon will be this service validate coupon. And now let's we'll just pass that coupon. And let's create that method. It will accept a string of coupon. And here we can do this. We'll create a new exception. Let's call it coupon exception. So the coupon exception would extend the uh, base exception. And here we could create two static functions. So one would be not found. And this would simply return new static. Uh, I will just write it out in Polish because this is a Polish website and I just, I want to convey that message to the user. So it will return a static. And now uh, we'll create another one for invalid, which will just throw new static. Okay, and this will return a 403, and again, the return type is static. Uh, so a cool thing that we could do is we could actually create like an custom exception. And this would be an abstract class that would extend the exception. And this class could implement the cust extend the custom exception. Uh, all right, so now we can utilize it here. So we can simply throw coupon exception, invalid, and let's just replace it to find. And if there is no requested coupon, we can throw coupon exception not found. 
And you may wonder, why did we create this custom exception class? I will show you in a second. Um, so we'll just replace this with coupon. Oops. Okay, let's... This will be coupon codes. This will be first, not find. And this will be coupon. And this will return that coupon. Okay. So now back to our controller, back to our controller. Um, we did create this custom exception simply because now here, what we can do is we can catch custom exception. And we know that those are the exceptions raised intentionally by our application. So we can simply return in a response JSON with message of exception, get message. And here we can do exception get code. You can also write a custom exception handler that would do it for us, but for now let's just uh, keep it here so it's more readable and everybody knows what's happening. And this will obviously return a coupon resource. So now the contact form. This is a beautiful um, little mail that I honestly don't care about this is not going to change like ever so who cares now our category controller this is again super simple but the category is like an important concept in the app and i think it will grow and grow so let's just be preemptive about this and create a new category so let's just create category service and this will simply let's create a service and we'll call it get all and let's create a public function construct and here we can do protected category service service all right now let's add this get all method that will return this and let's split this into multiple lines so it's more readable. You don't have a query builder uh, to simplify this or whatever, but honestly, it's super simple. Let's just leave it as it is. Now looking at the admin controller. You know, it's definitely not ideal, but it's admin. It's like more or less whatever we can do and what I think is worth is we'll create a new class called uh, you know admin order download controller and admin order shipped controller and these two bad boys are simply going to take care of these two methods that weren't supposed to be in that controller and let's make them invocable so let's paste it here and now we can make it invocable as well and we just need to change the declaration in our API so let's go to api.php and here we just need to replace these two with admin order shipped controller and admin order download controller. All right, so I think the last thing that we kind of didn't do is the payment controller. And this one is signed, so don't even think about posting webhooks to this URL. You're not going to win with me. Uh, but yeah, we, we just need to make sure that this one is also you know, working and, and has nice code. So uh, we can start with doing a request. So we can do php and make request. Uh, payment. Payment webhook request. Let's do payment webhook request. And since this is a structured format, we don't really need to add 
tools because we know what you're going to get, but uh, we can just do something that, you know, order is required and then order that external order ID is also required. And when it comes to payments, you know, we can make a service for sure because there is some additional logic that I do not want to share in the order con controller. Um, just to be on the safe side to, to not expose anything that's sensitive. But uh, here we can, services, we can do new payments and let's create the payment controller. I'm sorry, the payment service. And here we'll just do public function. Uh, consume callback. And we'll simply defer to that. All right, so here we can do public payment service and simply do this service consume and here we can do west all and this will accept data this will get the data Let's rename the data to order. Maybe not order, but let's do data. If there are, the response status isn't complete, we can just return. And otherwise we'll just mark this paid. And I have no clue why is it called handle. Let's just do payment controller and here we'll just invoke all right so honestly it's not a lot like we just went through a couple of controllers and made them slightly better but honestly this is all this job is about so like this was the refactoring in the 80 20 rule right we made it slightly better did we do everything correctly no is the code better? Yes. Is it better maintainable? Yes. So that's all that counts. See you in the next one. Have a great week. Bye.